you're watching an episode of Shiftcast. You can catch the full episode on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. Um, <laughs> let's move on to speed taking. Let's finish this off. Who wants a question first? I'm like, Oprah. bring it to me. Come on. All right, Hootie. Yep. Um, RLCS 2025 needs a new format. That's what Kuzi said. How do you feel? Yes, but small tweaks. I so I definitely understand the concern about the shortened season and rolling into just an extremely long off season relative to what we're used to. I definitely understand that. I think those are valid concerns. But the problem is, until you make that space, tournament organizers can't. They can't mm -hmm. make something right. Like that, you mm -hmm. have to to build it, and they will come, kind of thing, right? Like you have to provide the space for tournaments to exist, and then tournament organizers will make things happen. And obviously, we're going to have community. Um, community organizations, Shift, Tactical Banditry, et cetera. And then you have like Johnny Fear, Rizzo, James. You know, there are going to be people that run things online, but I'm not talking about that. I think we will see large off-season tournaments. We saw the FIFA thing that was um, announced, which is like well, a country-based uh, event. And I assume that has to be a LAN, right? Yeah, but it just not been announced where or when yet. Right. And then we have, of course, EWC, which is the uh, former Gamers 8 event. Um, but I think in the future, we will see an E-League. We will see a DreamHack. We will see a, a Wii Play. We will see something else, maybe multiple tournaments, uh, fill up some of this downtime in the offseason. So if you are concerned about it, that is a fair concern. But I think we will see we'll see some stuff fill the gap, fill the void there. The small tweaks that I want to make is to uh, qualification to do a little bit better job of consistently finding the top 16. I don't mind the three events into a major, three events into a major world championship. I don't mind that. But I think while it's exciting to see a lot of new faces in a regional, unfortunately, I do think that we didn't have the top, we didn't have the best competition that we could and or should have. Um, and, and look, that's okay. But I think if you're making a, a premier circuit where you the whole idea is to field the top 16 teams, the actual best in the world, and have them compete against one another, I think you could build a format that will more consistently yield the absolute best 16. This this format was just a little bit shaky here and there, and, and I don't think it's big. I don't think it's big adjustments. You know, I think a, a, a suggestion that I think would be fairly simple is to feed 32 teams into Sunday and then run two big Swiss brackets. Yeah, totally. that's gonna that's gonna field eight from each. And then you have your top 16 right there. So that, so, I think, would do a better job than, than our final day double ELAN bracket that we saw. So would you say it's even a new format at that point or just an improved I, format? Yeah, maybe maybe not a new format, but some adjustments to quals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we've, right. we've been preaching that all year, right? We yeah. Have, yeah. We're what, definitely what, not what the a only speedy one take as well, by the way. Yeah, oh, I went all the way around it there. <laughs> Michael, I'm going to throw yeah. it to you. From GC... Who got autocorrected to Greece in our sheet? Very nice. <laughs> Sorry um, about that, Greece. Power finally make top eight. Yes. At the World yes. Championship. Yes. Oh, They're okay. going top eight. I made a bracket the other day. It was the best bracket ever. Power top eight. No EU top four. It's oh. happening. Um, and oh, I will be so excited to see it. No, I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. And you know what? If there's one thing I can really take away from this season, I'm like, I'm an OCE head. I love OCE. I want to see OCE succeed. I like OCE. It's too bad that there seems to be a lot of uh, players that seem like they have horrible uh, political views over there. But you know what? <laughs> Look, I'm looking through that because it's just so much fun. Nobody's really trying half the time. They're just up. They're hanging out. They play all offense. OCE <laughs> is an absolute wonder. It's the most underrated region in the game to watch. And I want to see the Kings of OCE. I think the Kings of OCE, they can do it. They're just going to put it together for one series and keep making it to that round five. That's right. Um, and I think with the extended uh, break before Worlds, it's going to be a lot more variance in the Swiss. We're not going to see teams in a rhythm like they usually are. So if they can come out strong, get another big round one win, I think they might see a team that's less good that comes down from the 2-1 round that just had a hot start. Um, I think they're going to do it. I don't know if they'll go past that, but... I'm all in on OCE. I'm just all in on OCE. I might start my own OCE podcast. Just me talking about OCE every week. Let's do it. Not even Rocket League. Just like, I love OCE. I'm just naming <laughs> things I like about Australia. Um, Hootie. Yeah. Wait, I just asked Yens. you a question. Wow, brutal. Yeah. Um, Jens. Uh, 
2016, because you're a historical guy, you know, 2016 to 2018 was the best era of Rocket League esports. This one's from Crazy? Craze? Cries. Cries. Yeah. From the, <laughs> the Cries <laughs> corner, do. <laughs> if, if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, no, it, it was an incredible time to follow Rocket League. I've been following Rocket League since 2016. I discovered the game in March or May of 2016 and almost instantly got into the esports. I mean, we've talked about it with CloudFuel. Go back and watch that interview because mm-hmm. it's it was such an exciting time for the game. But, I mean, looking back at it, you can still understand why that was so good to watch. But since then, we've grown in so many ways. It's not just the gameplay that's gotten faster and better and more mechanical and more strategic. There's just so much in terms of events that were going on in 2019 with with all the all the Rocket League that was being played. Um, I mean, we we've had some wacky errors too with the grid every week oh, that, was that was crazy brutal, to follow dude. that was actually I mean, at that brutal. point i wasn't with shift i was uh, writing freelance for an outlet called vg recon mm-hmm. um and i was doing the na power rankings every week but sometimes there was a uh, like once every two weeks there was no like proper rlcs on the weekend for for na so i just had to judge them off of the grid matches, which the players <laughs> did not care about. Yeah, they did not care yeah, about that. So Scrap. they were just they were just playing for the fun of it. And I had to rank those teams. Crazy times, crazy fun times. But since then, we've seen so many great LAN events, so many great players pop up. I mean, if you go back to 2016, 2018, nobody has heard of Mon- Monkey Moon. Nobody mm-hmm. heard of Daniel. I mean, you're missing out on so many good players so many good moments that no no that, that wasn't the golden era it wasn't the best era of rock league it was a great era but i still it's still up from here yeah, i feel Only like getting better. if there's gonna be a golden era i don't think there is one because i think we're just too young i think it's gonna be a larger than just a couple year period i think i would probably just say 2019 because there's so many lands like if you're gonna pick one year one year time period to say like that was the golden era of rl esports that's the one where there was like a LAN every two weeks. Yeah, well, like. what you had in those days, 2016, 2018, is that there were so few games mm-hmm. in RLCS, yeah, right? Because it's all league play and they, mm-hmm. were, they, they were limited in terms of mm-hmm. teams, in terms of game days, that every game was really important. But when the open era started, within a month or two, the new players that came in had already overtaken the veterans in terms of how many games they were playing because that's how quick it went but back in those days it was easier because of how few games were being played to actually have a dynasty Mm -hmm. so in terms of dynasties and following a team just beat everyone like dignitas did Mm -hmm. that's incredible maybe impossible maybe it's actually impossible now yeah I mean, the closest so, we'll probably see is Vitality. Uh, yes. They got sent. Yeah, Vitality did basically. Well, they they almost did more in a single split than mm-hmm. Dignitas did over three seasons, which is crazy, yeah. but it's true. Insane. But and 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 who knows? Maybe the next year will just be G two winning it all. But I don't see it happening. I think it's basically impossible for a team to be that dominant because of how many games are they're played. So it's a different, just. Totally different era, and it's it wasn't the best. It was great, but not the best. And this guy talked about my speed take. I know. Come I know. on. I knew. I knew Jens was gonna love getting in his old old man bag. There. <laughs> you did. You called it. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, the lands attending those lands was special too because they were yeah. a lot smaller. But looking back at, at the first land I went to was in Amsterdam in in 2018 and. There were 2,000 people there in the Amsterdam theater. I knew barely anyone. I knew like five people back in back in those days. But now, if you talk to other people in, who are still you know active in the scene, who are proper diehard fans, they were all also there. And it was like, you were there too? No way. <laughs> totally didn't see each other or didn't yeah. know about each other. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy how, how times have changed. All right. Who do you want to question? 
Let me hear it. That's right. Let's talk about casting. As you are a caster yourself, RLCS should bring back three-person casting. As you guys remember, we used to have, like, some of the finals would have three people casting. The Legendary Fury of Moist series did. Uh, What do you think? This is from Jamari, by the way. Hmm. It's a long thought. It is. There's a few different things. I mean, I'm thinking about one, like at LAN, it could be helpful to like save voice, right? Like you you split the load a little bit more. And I, I think at LAN, it's important to stay fresh because you need to be ready for the big moment whenever it hits. But I also feel like we've trimmed the team down. So doing three people per cast, maybe, you know, maybe those kind of nullify. But as far as a preference, I I don't, to be honest, I don't really remember the, the, the TriCast as like a standout thing, you know? So I, I, I would guess based off of that, that, that I don't think we really need it, you know? I think if it was something that was ingrained in my memory as like a special wow this is I- incredible then maybe i maybe i would say yes but i think uh yeah you know i think what we've got now is fine yeah i remember it but it it doesn't stand out to me as something we should bring back sure because it, it it's just not really the game for it it right rook league is the kind of fast-paced gameplay that you want to that you can cover with two people um but you also have enough you also need to have enough downtime that you don't really need three people yeah. to to go over everything. There's not like in a game like League of Legends, you have it very often, and then you have one caster who's really the play by play caster, like yeah. really going hard, just play by play. That's all he does, and, the entire cast. And, and then you have someone. Those are in. how long of the matches? Yeah, the matches are like thirty to fifty right. minutes. It's very um, different. And then you have someone t- kind of taking over when. It's going a little bit slower, just talking mm-hmm. about the game. And then another one who is purely color casting, basically, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of how, how it turns out. But in Rocket League, it's just a completely different dynamic. So I don't really yeah. see that working out. And also, you have to do it online, by the way, because have to, yeah. three online. people online is no. impossible to coordinate. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was cool. I just remember that. I remember one match, basically that it was really good in, and that was the one where they did Fury of Moist because they had uh, his name. Yeah. Yes. And Chimaco. and so that kind of gave it more of a, an international flair. Right. But other than that, I don't remember any of them. So, All right. Who needs one? Who um, needs one? I can throw one to one. you. Uh, uh, yeah, we need. there's one on here that needs to go to Michael. Okay. Oh, well, Actually, I feel get, like both, ahead, you then. could say, are, are, are kind of, in my in my domain so just well this is from reese and he says first killer is no longer a top three player in north america definitely one of the takes of all time (laughs) (laughs) so hold on um hold on before you answer who's number one mode okay oh he's the best player in the world yeah 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 that's right that's fair number two oh jesus Mm-hmm. He show, I think he showed it. And then number three is Jason. Jason's number three. <laughs> okay, okay, defend that. Did you guys not watch the? Did you get? I know uh-huh. you were watching Oxygen. I mean, you got a good look at Jason in that match okay, against buddy. him. And he was listen. He wasn't playing against no bums. He was playing against Oski and Joyo, and he looked clear. Mm-hmm. Right? They don't get. They don't get to that. They, first of all, they don't play G two as well without him playing that. He was. That was the best for you to say that. Mr. Reese, after clearly the best performance of the season for him, where he was clearly a top 10, (laughs) top eight player at the event, clearly the best, the third best North American player, because let's be honest, Daniel and Atomic didn't really wake up until that final. That semifinal against Furia, there was like three or four moments where where Mo just took the ball and went like, all right, let's go, and just went and and scored, or made made a play and made it easy, okay? And and for me, watching Gen G, it was like it was like phase levels of the Jason show. So, uh, yeah, he's still clearly top three in North America. Still the second highest producing player statistically this season. Uh, you know, 
uh, we're doing this weird flirting versus harassment thing with BDS and Gen G, where they won the same amount of regionals and have the same placements on LAN. And one of them, it's like, oh, are they a sneaky Dark Horse? Oh, Drowley's so good. And First Killer, it's like, <laughs> oh, First Killer sucks now. Oh, my God. They can't make top four. So uh, I don't know why we're doing that. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, he's still that guy. I don't know why you're thinking you have to defend yourself. I agree. I wasn't he's talking to you. I was talking to Reese. Yeah. Reese is on his damn mind. I'll tell you that. He's, he's, he is absolutely... Um, he has crossed the line. I can't lie. I, I don't know if I would the, put LJ over it. Yeah, the LJ top three, I think, really made yeah, things. Yeah, I think that's it's a two G2 sell because players. Now, now you're saying Daniel's not top three, and I don't think yeah, he's right. not. Agree he's with not that. He's not top three, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, Daniel Daniel is is amazing, and he's, he's not first killer. He's never been first killer. Like, Hoodie, I didn't I know, know we had Dazarin on the podcast. Dude, no. Michael, you oh, have, now, you have, now I'm, I'm, I'm Dazarin for putting first killer third in North America. You have a magical ability. You have a magical yeah. ability to say something that is fairly defendable, but throw in something that's just is out of left field and <laughs> makes correct. no sense. I'm that correct. you're gonna you're like like eighty percent of the people that would be like, yeah, Michael's right. You're gonna they're gonna hear that one point and be like, whoa, what? Why that is this literally. Listen, this is by the way, this is Mo? literally why John, aka, always gets downvoted on Reddit all the time because he does this literally all the time. <laughs> well, you know what? I like John, aka, always because I think he stands on business just like I do. Beast mode. Uh, LJ, first killer, Daniel Atomic. That's your top five in North America. Jack mm -hmm. sixth. That, that, that's it. That's that's it. Like, I'm sorry. You can cry. You can cope. You can seethe. <laughs> but you're not going to be right. <laughs> that's just how it is. I am the authority on this. Anyway, yeah, yeah. finish it off with Jens. There we go. Uh, who said this? I know what the take is, but who said it? Steve. G2 Steve. Steve. Um, Steve says that KC and G2 would be the best final from a narrative slash story perspective. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I have to agree with that because it would be the comeback of the ages for Carmen Corum. I don't think Wait, the fans... why? Sorry. Why? They would lose. Well, they would lose in the grand final. I mean, I'm making it to the grand final. I'm just, right? I was just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Josh. I'm with yeah, I'm just yeah, Josh. yeah. Well, I don't even think the Garmin Corp fans believe in their team anymore. Whoa. Like, not, like, of course, they're still going to support them. And they're still going to throw out the copium that if Garmin Corp would have been in London, you know, G G2 wouldn't have such an easy run. It's true. And, Just like G how if Shopify Rebellion was there. Falcons would have went top. G2 went top not two. beating any European teams. I mean... Uh... They, they didn't beat any SSA teams either. You know, so fraud regions don't get to play yeah, the best teams in the yeah, world. Yes, yeah. I, I, well, I fear. Well, well. Um, we can yeah. make all the wrongs right, though, with a uh, KC G2 Grand Finals in uh, Dallas. So, yeah, I have to agree. That would be the game because gentlemates have kind of thrown out their narratives after after uh london i mean they're just not the top team they, they never really were but there was still this thought of they're such a good land team if they can repeat in london and they almost did they looked incredible mm -hmm. but then they just faltered a little bit i feel like carmi corp needs to come back with more than a vengeance and if i want to see them beat g2 I want to see it happen in the grand finals. So Steve, Steve's got it there. I really want to see KC, G2, KC, and G2 Gentlemates just because if G2 beats them both, and I'm not saying they will because those are great teams, but if they beat them both, then they will have beaten all the teams that were considered in like the elite tier. They've beaten then Furia, the Gen.G, Vitality, BDS right now. Uh, and what was the other team they've beaten? It was like eight oh, teams. Sorry? There's eight teams that we, we, we consider to be like the top of the Gen G, G2. Oh, yeah, they've beaten Falcons. So they've beaten Falcons, Falcons yes. Vitality, BDS, Furia, and Gen G. But they get those last two, and they can say they beat every other top contender this year, and they won two lands, and they beat Falcons. It's like, you know, we're talking about all time great roster at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be something special. And then I'll, I'll get another sign, and I'll hold it up, and, and it will say NA is better than EU. Whoa. I don't want it to say that, though. I want it to say only four different letters. M O D E. Where is if it? they sweep if they sweep the grand finals, I will. Can you 
here. What is it? Oh my god, it says mode. <laughs> if G2, okay. if G2 or mode. Gen G clear the grand finals 4-0, okay. I'll hold up that sign. All right, I'm going to make you one it, too. Make it a reaction post. If Gen G win worlds, I'm buying all three of us a jersey and we have to wear it for the entire <laughs> offseason. Oh my god. For no, the what? just one episode. Just one episode. Okay. One episode, you guys, you have to wear. I'll buy you. I will buy and ship you Gen G jerseys. And you have to wear them with me if Gen G win worlds. All right. I'm down. Awesome. All right. Um, un, un, underrated thing about the major before we leave. Uh, speaking of things that we kind of promise, I was watching a little bit of Roll Dizzy stream and he kept, he was so out on G2. He kept being like, guys, if G2 win, I'll shake my ass on camera. <laughs> and so when they won, this whole chat's like, oil up unk like all this stuff <laughs> and so he took his camera and put it to like the smallest like the literal like pixels barely pixels and the whole time i was like reported reported for a scam reported for a scam <laughs> you got you you that this is ridiculous that was great so that's a real that yeah, awesome. I'm done after that. let me let me yeah. ask you guys one question this popped up mm-hmm. um on my stream when i got home do you think the vitality split you know, near perfection, uh, or G two season, only top twos. What is more impressive? G two vitality. <sighs> it's it's longer. It's just longer. Like it's you. You have to do it for longer. Vitality. It like, look at what happened but at Army to court. win. <laughs> they did win. They had no, the same time. amount of wins in it, that one split as the thing did. To me, I look at what happened with Carmen Corp as a evidence that what G2 did is tougher. Because Carmen Corp almost hit what Vitality did and then didn't have it hit another final. And G2, that consistency is hard. We can complain about oh, they didn't play this team, they didn't play that team. You get they are the poster child for the entire season of people complaining that oh, just beat who you have to beat isn't fair. They were literally just beating who they had to beat the whole time, except for Genji Mobile and Racing, of course. But most of the teams that they played. They just beat them. But that's the they, thing. You have, if you want to be the most impressive feat, it's going to be Vitality. You got to win. Just winning, not just getting there. They did winning win. It. They won five times. Yeah, but not every time in a row. Vitality okay, they, didn't drop a single thing in that entire split. Regional, I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that regional, wasn't unbelievable. Major world championship. Yeah. Okay, but you didn't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He said the Vitality split. He did not say the World Championship. If you include well, the that, World I mean, Championship, that, yeah, the okay. World Championship. Then yes, I agree. It's Vitality. Now, I, I, okay, look, I'm, when you I'm said split, the, I got stuck on just the major. I'm on the Vitality side as well. Okay, then I think because we're I think agreement. the winning is ultimately people don't care about second place. They don't care about it. Eh. A year, a year later, people don't care about it. Seems like people care a lot when forever, it's uh, and, and people be like, okay, great, that's fine. First when place, NA when it, when NA wins, it seems like people care a lot about second place all of a sudden. Because actually, they were better. <laughs> actually, third, third, fourth were actually better. Actually, and if they had played the winner, the real they finals were there in the quarter. Yeah. What finals. I'm going to say is yeah. this: if G2 goes to win worlds, yeah, and 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 honestly, yeah, maybe even just course. maybe even just goes top two at worlds, no. I might yeah. take, no. I might take, mm. I might take a full se- bro, mm. a full season, and you never. Including yeah. both majors, you never go under second place. That is crazy. Yeah, that would you just said no one cares balance. about second place. Yeah, I, yeah, I do, I do, and that is that is fairly contradictory. I agree, but a full season of only grand finals, grand finals, is, is insane. Fair. I think yeah. I would say, um, I think they'd have to win it to be better. And yeah, yeah. I, I got stuck on the split part of it where sure, I thought you sure, just meant yeah. win three regionals, win a major versus win yeah. four regionals, the, three, two finals, and then thing. Right. But yeah, the world championship is the world championship. Like you can win majors, but if you want your name to be up on well, Chance you, Field, you got to win the big one. In the comments below too, what you think. Do you, yeah, totally. Would you, would you prefer a season of top two with a major win? You know, what is it? Three regional wins, four regional mm-hmm. wins? Um, or would you prefer the absurd run? From Vitality yeah. just winning every region. I, I also think thing. I also think Vitality alone is one thing, and then Zen added to that is like that's just yeah. crazy, man. Like, yeah, just, just straight out of the gates. Yeah, like right out of the gate. You all like you think about that one v one run he had too, where he mm. just took on like 10, 11 of the top twenty players in the world, just destroying yeah. everyone. To that think was just such that, a fun time. To think that 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 Vitality core 
really miss the regional in back when it was like impossible to miss a regional is is insane miss a regional um, miss the first major what well, they were top yeah. eight in the second major right yeah they went on top eight to liquid uh, in a really close series they were they, they had figured it out by then but then um you know you add you add zen and things change and then g2 has a great story too where it was like you know na formed like a phoenix in the ashes with this like bio weapon of a of a team and and they and they worked their tail off to get back on par and then eventually above europe or the top of europe at least thank you for watching this segment of the shift cast again you can catch the full episode here on our youtube channel or on spotify thank you for watching